is Reverend Gillian V. Harris. Gillian says, economists are talking about doom and gloom in the far too near future. For many, doom and gloom are presenting themselves in their lives already. Can't pay rent, can't buy food. Sometime in the last 20 years, the law of attraction became extraordinarily popular. There's a reason for that. And there's a reason why quantum physics backs it up. Why difficulty and validity over the topic of race relations, race relations is based in reincarnational history and a desperate need for ancestral healing and her personal experience with past life recall and reincarnation history in diverse lifetimes. She says, when we are reincarnated, we're not always the same race, the same religion, or political parties. You can't be, or you might not be, a Republican. You might be a Democrat. You might not be a Democrat. You might be a Republican. Gets confusing, right? If people really understood where they'd been, there would have been less division and more compassion right now. Next is how to create a quarantine crew. Now listen carefully on this one. Small groups of people, now that we got the holidays coming up, you better listen. Small groups of people who are okay to hug. Be unmasked and spend some time within six feet of each other. Seven steps to safe COVID-19 dating for the sake of mental health, as well as physiological well-being. And what is a coupling agreement? Her sex survey and where to find it, as well as the results. There's a lot more we're going to talk about tonight. Reverend Harris is also a writer and the author of Have We Met? How to Identify Your Reincarnated Loved Ones. Soulmate? Hmm, maybe. The Secrets of Lost. The Validity of Multi-Dimensional Extension. More extensions. Her website is www.gillianharrisworldwide.com for things that can change your life. We're going to change a lot of lives tonight, right here. You can also call into the show tonight. You can speak to Gillian right now on the show. All you do is dial 609-663-0153. You'll be on hold until you're called into the show. But you can hear the show while the show is going on in real time while you're on hold. So you will not miss a thing. So let's bring on the honored special guest tonight. May I introduce Reverend Gillian Harris. my goodness this is going to be an awesome night i feel it already <laughs> just by just by listening to myself for crying out loud there's so much things there's so many things going on right now in our world nobody nobody every you ask anybody a question like what's going on in the world well you know it's this or well you know it's that or, well you know it's the other thing but not really down to the bottom line of what is going on in this world jillian harris Reverend Jillian Harris has it for you tonight, right here. How are we, Reverend? How are we? Well, <laughs> we are however we perceive to be. <laughs> uh, oh, that'll do it every time. <laughs> Absolutely, because one says they're fine and the other says, no, things are not fine at all. So I'm good. How are you? I am awesome. That's amazing. That's what you <laughs> there, right there now. You go. There you go. Yeah. So thank you for that introduction. And um, and I wanted to also say, I'm glad that originally you were saying my name wrong because then people will look for the right spelling of my name. Because so Jillian with a G and it's a soft G. So it's, how do you say your first name? 
Jillian, like a J. That's what I said, I think. Jillian, yeah. At the very, very beginning, you were saying Gillian a lot. But you know what? You have oh, such Oh, that was the promo. Okay. okay. You have such an amazing voice. You could say whatever you want, really. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. <laughs> now, let's skip the COVID stuff. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. I'm only okay. kidding. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, seriously speaking, I mean, uh, you want to... Uh, you have to talk about this sex survey. I haven't done it yet, but I am going to take it. Uh, Are you going to so? Oh, everybody's pointing a finger at me. You got to take that one. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I won't know your answers. It's all anonymous. You know, I won't know your answers unless you tell me what you answered. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Uh, okay. I, 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 you know, I just, you know, you get too old. You know, it's like you turn around, and you go, yeah, I'm going to answer anything. Don't worry about a thing. <laughs> so at 99, I mean, I'm just, I'm doing fine. <laughs> oh, go with your bad self. That's awesome. A- absolutely. Now, tell us. A little bit about this, because right now, with everything going on in this yeah. world, yeah, okay, how, you know, you know, I have a daughter that's in New York State. I'm in Florida mm-hmm. right now in the studio, but she had, I had said to her, I said, how are we going to repopulate the world? It's a, it's a strange question. And my, my daughter, Annette, who she's a very successful young lady, mm-hmm. she said to me, she said, Dad, you figure it out. <laughs> that was a good answer. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Typical daughter. Where'd that question come from? Um, you know, there's so many different things. We have uh, things that are in Georgia, the Georgia Stones. If you ever read them, we're supposed to get down to 50 million people around the world. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of other things coming out about vaccines, mm-hmm. everything else, with a, with a little cliff in them that to depopulate, you know, people. Yeah. Uh, there's also a lot of things in that that are enabling women not to give birth mm. by messing up with the physio- physiology right. of a woman. And, you know, all of these things in COVID-19, it's just as bad as anything else. And then screwing up people's brains mm-hmm. and chemicals that make us what we are and that mm-hmm. are not reprodu- you know, reproducing in our bodies. Right. With all of that going on. And now we're talking about dating. Yeah. Okay. So I got to say, you say with all that going on, and those are, are those facts or theories? No, no, those are facts. Okay. So that's so scary. So what you want to do then is well, look at the situation because when it comes to the law of attraction and conscious creation, basically those theories, those um, formulas have nothing to do with what's going on around you. You know, it's about um, being able to create whatever you need to create despite the physical circumstances. So it's actually kind of cool to hear you lay that out. And we get to then decide whether we want to be part of that. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You mm-hmm. nailed it. And out of what you talk, well, actually what you know, I had read even on the website, the things that you talk about have to do with uh, you know, whether or not you should go out there and date or be with people. Okay, so I'm an intention coach. Just a second. Are we, are we too scared? I mean, seriously, this is the question that I'm asking. Are we too scared to be with somebody else because of the fear that the media is putting into us? Okay. Got it. So we have you see the idea of where going here? Yeah, I do. And, I, and we have two things going on because I – okay – Okay. Okay. So like I'm an intention coach. I have a client of a few, um, but one in particular started this whole sex thing um, because she was like, I want to continue, you know, calling in the one I'm not going to stop just because of this COVID thing. Like not everybody has COVID. So, and I don't have it. So then why can't I find somebody else who doesn't have it? And then we be together and don't get it. I'm like, I like this. So then it was about using what I do as an intention coach to help her create that happening. But so one thing that I did in the beginning was talk to a lot of people. Um, I just found it an interesting conversation and I myself was in this a bit of a conundrum, just like my client. Um, 
So I said, oh my gosh, well, like, you know, what, what are the, con what's the conversation on this? What are people talking about? Um, I do online dating. I'm single. So I do online dating. And I noticed that the younger folks are, the more, you know, ready they are to, you know, let's, can we meet at 4.30? <laughs> um, whereas the older folks were, and I think that this also had to do with the time period of where we were. This is like, three or four months ago. And there's definitely been an algorithm shift, you know? And so more and more people are feeling this is a conspiracy. Not enough people are sick enough around me. Um, you know, Blanche got it and she only had, you know, diarrhea. Uh, this one got it and she had sniffles and, you know, such and such, you know? Not enough people are seeing it's kind of like cancer at the beginning. Nobody was really seeing the results of people who smoked cigarettes, got cancer, and then, you know, went through everything they went through with that because they were then sequestered in their spaces trying to heal and survive and then maybe not surviving and now they're gone and so we don't get to see it. Until enough people got to see that, you know, cancer, it didn't, it didn't really affect cigarette smokers like it does now. Now they're like, oh, damn. So what I noticed was when I did this survey, you know, I, I'm, I expected that I would find kind of what I found, which is um, that the younger they were, the more risks that they would take. And maybe that was based on what they were hearing from the news, that it wouldn't hurt younger folks as much as it would hurt older folks. Um, but then I found, and I, I didn't do the survey quite exactly, didn't configure it uh, the way I needed to, but I, I really, the numbers are large enough to see that there's a, a contingent of people who believe that it is not um, that serious, that it's not uh, something that they have to fear for their lives over. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, it's a strong number. And so they are not wasting time. They're moving forward um, and continuing to connect. Um, but it's it seems like it's less now. It seems like um, we get to a place where it becomes less and now I feel like it's waving again and it could become something else. And I think folks aren't aware of what's happening in other countries. Well, the UK in particular. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the UK is very US-y, you know what I mean? In terms of a, a Western society. Um, so it's like, if it could happen there, a sex ban, then could it possibly happen here? So let me just like back up before we go there and say, I talked to a lot of people and it seemed like their answers about what they were gonna do, whether they would hook up or not, um, had to do with um, how afraid they were, how much they thought they would or would not die as a result of COVID-19. So unfortunately, we've got a lot of controversy around it. And the controversy is making us do stuff like some people are not wearing masks and they're getting together behind closed doors. They're like, okay, let's have a party. And, you know, and nobody's wearing masks and here's oh, yeah. why these agreements and things like that are happening. So in the UK, um, now they've got the sex ban. And, and what I noticed with what I read with them, like they are severely... Um, social distancing, uh, but they will allow what they call a social bubble between households. And their whole thing right now is people who are not married or yeah, not married or I, know, I guess if they're married, they have to be living in the same house, married or not. If you're in a ro re relationship and it's romantic, mm -hmm. sexual, whatever, you got to be living in the same house or you cannot touch each other, no matter how long you've been dating, no longer, no matter how long, okay? 10 years, you've been dating the same one person. If you live in a separate house, you can only meet in public, outdoors, and six feet apart with a mask on. What are they, they going to put on? You showing you? And I want to know, so what that, that's kind of, all that's going to do is make neighbors call neighbors, I'll call on neighbors. Oh, yeah, World War II all over again. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So yeah. that's, um, I mean, that's uh, that just feels so awful. So that then makes me want to roll backwards and say, why can't we just be a little bit more conservative? What if, you know, what if there is a way to um, to to cut this, the numbers, kill the curve again, like we were trying to do in the beginning? I mean, we're all COVID fatigued. We're just so right. over 
doing this, you know, like really, oh my God, I really wanted by this time for us to, the numbers to be so down that we wouldn't be going through this. But it doesn't help that there's a great big bunch of folks who are like, you know, it's not that big a deal, just spread it, damn it. So, <laughs> so they're spreading that's, that's, it. That's the hard, hard uh, yeah, you know, which, idea you know, this. How do you feel about that? You die, you die, you, you live, you live. Well, you know, when, when you talk about something like that, I think, and it's just my own feelings, this is going to keep going to the point whereas it's going to happen anyway, one way or the other. I mean, let's face it. When, when I was a kid, Annette, and I mean, I mean a real kid, <laughs> my sister had gotten chicken pox. Yeah. So the doctor told my mother to tell me to eat with her utensils. So did I get yeah, got it. Chicken pox, right? That was that was the same thing. Let me see now. How many years ago was that? That was about sixty-four years ago. Got it. Ooh. Well, I remember they, they'd have chicken pox parties. No, or, no, but you went parties. to school and everybody in your class got it. Oh man! And then you're well, okay. Now people get shingles oh, and my all God. kind of things because of it. You know, when they were kids. Or they got when they were oh, adults. Got it. Those are those are diseases that have been around forever. Were they killed? No. Yeah, they but that's not get, those, aren't, yes. those aren't deadly diseases. It's not but the they kind can of... be, they can be to a male. Oh. They, they can hurt you. Okay. It can really, really hurt you. And you know, these kind of things that have been around forever. So now they got COVID. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you have a disease or something, some type of a disease. It's got to be an underlying disease. Mm -hmm. And then you get COVID. That's like getting the, co the flu with the same deal. You're going to be just as dead with the real with an H1N1 flu than you would if you got the COVID. I beg vigor vigorously to differ. Go ahead. Because yeah, because, um, you know, we're talking the underlying conditions are things like, you know, high blood pressure, potentially, um, for instance, let's stop there, or even just um, obesity, well, let's just stop there. Um, so, cancer. cancer? Well, but even let's just stop with obesity and high okay. blood pressure, um, which um, is... Uh, something that's happening a lot in, in the um, African-American community. Um, and they are um, the group, a group, um, that is hard hit by COVID-19 and the deaths um, mm. from it. Okay, so um, regular flus and blood pressure, I don't know. I've never seen that be a problem. Of course, I'm not a doctor saying that like that, but I've never, ever heard them go, oh, my God, the flu season is coming around. If you've got high blood pressure and if you're overweight, you know what I mean? I've never seen that. I also have never seen a flu that would leave my lungs scarred. I've never seen a flu that would damage my kidneys or go to my brain, ignore everything, go to my brain, eat it and kill me. I've never seen that from a flu. So here's one thing I've learned. Um, there is an awesome guy. His name is Dr. Chris Martinson, and you can find him on YouTube. He's got a channel called Peak Prosperity, um, but he is um, a PhD um, pathologist. So he studies disease. So when this whole COVID thing came up, I, I started following him. He showed me the difference between um, COVID-19 and coronavirus. So he's like, I'm not afraid of the virus anymore. And a bunch of his listeners were like, what the hell are you saying? Like, make up your mind. You're not afraid of the virus anymore. And he's like, showed us the difference between the coronavirus, which yes, we've had coronaviruses for a really long time. And oh, now yeah. we have a new one that can lead to this, not a virus, a disease called mm -hmm. COVID-19. So COVID-19 is actually a disease. That's what you do not want to get. Get the coronavirus, okay, fine. You do want to handle that, but you don't want COVID-19 for real. And so now also we're in this society, this time period, so many great movies, but I believe that a lot of those things that we've seen in our movies have come from, you know, they may seem very futuristic, um, but that is what life is made from. Yeah, it's kind of like you can envision it. You can make it happen, you know? So I feel like, you know, we've got all these conspiracy theories. A lot of them are coming from, um, you know, what we've lived through was just watching television, Netflix, movies. 
So I don't know that um, some of this is helping us. And I think that we could get ourselves in a situation where like, for instance, rebel about the masks, keep rebelling, keep rebelling, and then finally figure out, oh my gosh, maybe we should just wear masks and that'll help a little bit. That's a good idea. Thought. So along those lines then, okay, dating. Oh. What are we gonna do? Bob, are you single or are you married? I'm single, but live together. Okay, got it. Well, so you're a lucky one. You're one of the lucky ones. There are a whole bunch of people who are single. And there are a bunch of people, like for me, for instance, I'm going to just like sacrifice my privacy and just say, when this um, uh, thing happened, I had broken up with somebody like in like uh, September of the previous year. And and then the holidays were coming. So I'm like, okay, let me do the holidays. And then January, I started dating again. Okay, okay. 2020 is such a great year. And I'm going to start dating again right now. And then boom, okay. COVID-19, right? So as we speak, TMI, whatever, more than a year we're talking about, right? But it's really for... <laughs> Um, it's not going to be like that, a difficult a situation. I'm just kind of like eeny, meeny, miny, mo at this moment. And people are actually, um, now that I've come up with how to go about this, people are actually okay. In my survey, I found that more than 80% of people are willing to sign a, um, uh, a coupling type agreement where you promise to be monogamous. Um, and this is early monogamy. This is at a point in your dating where you normally would not be committed to monogamy you just simply be dating but it's just that if this covid thing is real you don't want to be touching too many people you don't want to be walking through the park holding hands with too many people you know it's mm. so, yeah that you hold hands and go home and kill your family by accident you know yeah, so, nasty, yeah. <laughs> yes so i have you want to hear about my seven steps for oh, safe oh, COVID oh, i'm telling you i i Put it in. A, I put some of it anyway into the uh, the promo, okay. and I I have the read on it. Okay, going through it, and I said, "Man, this girl knows what she's talking about." <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I you know I told uh, you know your other your other uh, uh, cat, uh -huh. that, you know the same thing, and it's like, hey, you know this is this is uh, you know this is definitely what Pyramid One Radio is built on. It's people that are talking to people. Yeah. Yeah, and really, that's the whole reason I brought up all of this stuff, the survey, the seven steps, the um, coupling agreement, um, just yeah, to... Well, I got a question. Before you go any further, Yeah. the coupling agreement, now, yeah. this is this is something because I saw it on, on the website. Yeah. You know, does this mean, now, I'm going to make it so that everybody out there that can, uh, can completely understand. Mm -hmm. This is a thing, whereas... If you're going out with somebody and like uh, you say, do you like me? And they say yes. And you say, do yeah. I like you? Yeah, it's kind of sort of like you. Okay. Uh, yeah. would, you, would you like to go out to dinner with me every night, you know, and, uh, you know, every other weekend or whatever out? Yeah. yeah. Are you going to see anybody else? No? Good. Okay. That passes. Yeah. Okay. So we're only going to see each other. Okay. Now, what do you do? Do you put like a, like a, a, a uh, an ID on them with, with a, with a, uh, with a locator, locator on it? Or something, or do you just say to look? You got to be honest with me. You're not going to be it. with anyone else. That's it. You I have mean, to. I'm How many guys are going to get down on their knees for that? You know what I mean? The heck with this one knee thing. Get on down on two. <laughs> Wait, you mean guys are going to want this? I think uh, really. I think the guys are. I mean, I'm just talking from from things that I've seen or heard of. Right. You know, you know I you know some of the things that that I that I do that I go around and I talk to different groups and things. It's you see younger people more or less. How would you say it? They're experimenters. They like to experiment and to experiment. They go, gee whiz, you know, like I could really, really, really like this lady. But let me see how much I'm going to like this lady. Right. And really gets down on those two legs. Now, I don't know how honest they are when they do it, but they're going to get down on those two knees. They're going to go, oh, please, you'll be the only one with me for the rest of my life. Right. Now, yeah, I'm serious. Most most women will turn around and say, say what? Right. But but, but on the other hand, there is a need mm -hmm. for this approach. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm making funny of it in a, in a way, but I'm not making funny of it. I, what I'm saying is it's got to be something that's meaningful to both parties. Yeah. 
Now we're talking hitting soul. You know what I mean? We're, we're past the spirit part. We're now we're into the soul. So not spirit. Well, you heard what I said when I said uh, soulmate. I don't yes. mean soulmate. It doesn't have to be a soulmate, but no. but you might there might be something that person may do, say, or just emit from her or his body that you will turn around and go, you know, I've seen that before. Or something will be familiar to you. Now, there's a cell, soul mate. Okay. I have met before. So that's awesome. That's almost a totally different subject than what I'm talking about. Well, no, I want to steer you back. Because I don't think that's possible with what I'm talking about. I mean, I'm seeing um, the physical need um, for um, touch and intimate touch and um, to be able to be in, in close proximity and have someone that you can do that with without wearing a mask and not worrying about micro spittles. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> That's what I'm, you know what I mean? I mean. I asked you about that though. Do you have to go out, should you go out and get a test? Absolutely. That's one of the seven steps. And Ooh. then, and, and then um, part of that is, I mean, backing up, this only works out. The only people who be interested in this are folks who actually take COVID-19 as a serious thing to try to avoid. Otherwise, why go through this? So for those who think that it is that serious, then this becomes actually kind of a viable solution. You know, I mean, we are in a state where um, suicide rates were already going up in 2019 and, you know, prior to COVID-19. Um, and now they are not decreasing. They're still going up. And we're finding all of these mental, psychological, you know, emotional um, conditions that people are having that are very serious. And um, just the health of the nation in that way is being affected by what we're going through. So to couple, because we're companion animals by nature, is urgent. Um, and then sex is urgent, too. I mean, it just physiologically, on a health level, just emotionally, psychologically, it's important. So, so if that then be the case, um, what I'm talking about is, you know, you found someone who you're attracted to and you're in the beginning. Normally you would date this person for like, you know, maybe a month or two before, you know, you really, really touched them, touched them. And maybe so I'm not saying that these coupling agreements are like, okay, you and I are going to have sex with each other. I mean, that would be ultimately in my perspective the plan um but really it's like we're honing in on each other we no longer need those uh, those online dating accounts mm -hmm. we can stop that for now we can start new ones later suspend them turn them back on later if we need to but for now we're only going to concentrate on each other we don't have to worry about anyone else right now it's just you and me when we want to date or go somewhere or hang out have dinner whatever it's you and me and um and then, and then in the uh, coupling agreement, there's this opt out line. That's the most, I'm like, come on now, there's an opt out line. So if you just are not feeling it, it's like, gosh, I've really kind of gotten to know this person now. And I'm just not, I'm just, we're not really compatible. We really aren't. He's a minimalist and I'm the opposite. So I'm going to sign to opt out and I'm going to date it. I'm going to click my camera with my phone, I'm gonna email him an image of my signature opting out. And you know, if he wants to talk about it, fine. You know, we can hang out, but not as dating anymore. And um, and so now you've opted out and you're free to go to the next person. Why is that so hard? And so we're talking we need integrity. That's all. That's not that's not hard. Are you sure that nobody's gonna be scared on uh, on legal issues? So what legal issues? I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking about, you know, somebody say, well, you know, you just clicked a piece of paper. How do you feel? Wait, now, don't forget, now, I'm just I'm just trying to bring this from from the everyday, you know, Joe, Joe, the blow, whatever guy. Yeah. That, that turn around and, and say, well, you know, you might have sent me that thing now on, on the cell phone or something like that. But what do you mean by that? Uh, well, sure, we could talk about it, but I have opted out. I, I have the same thing. It happens in all races. I mean, I know I know an Asian couple that that, that broke up about. Mm, let me see now. They were on about number ten, I think, by now, and they keep getting back together again. I oh, see them. Right. I'm serious. I mean, it's it's funny, but I mean, sometimes things are either serious or not serious. Yeah, it's right when you're you talking know, about the disease. 
you could sign a new agreement, but the thing is to not go sign a new agreement with someone else before opting out with the previous person. I mean, uh, it's that whole uh, thing of just, just not cheating. That's cheating because okay. the one person is then still being monogamous to you while you're multiplying. Mm -hmm. And that's not okay, especially in this. And, you know, especially if like a person is counting on you to part of the agreement is not only um, are you not going to see other people, but you're also concentrating. You are promising you're going to wear your mask. You're going to social distance. You're going to wash your hands. You're going to, you know, do all those things that we know are helping um, to keep us cootie, cootie, cootie free. Um, I mean, I love how um, in 2020, the flu season, took a full on dive um, as we were social distancing. We were doing it so serious, trying to get rid of the COVID thing, yeah. but we ended up not catching any colds and no flus or anything. Well, how about, you know, we you act like that going forward. And then that way I know that I can go see my parents on Saturday and not kill them, that kind of thing. Yeah, that's, that's another issue. <laughs> it's a huge issue. What you're talking about now with the dating now, I, 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 gave, you, I gave you another side of the, the dating thing and that from, from just what I, what I hear people talking about, but you know, to myself, I mean, being an older person, yeah, I would be the number one, your number one fan. Okay. Um, what you're doing only yeah. because of the plain reason that like, Hey, this is great. This is something you could turn around to somebody and say, Hey, I, you know, I want to be with you. Right. That is the part that I mean, it's the kids part that the guy's going to turn around and say, well, what do you mean by this thing over here? And it's on my phone. You ever notice that he said, well, let me, let me just go around this for a little bit. You ever notice how they're always watching their phones? Oh yeah. Phones are the God, you know, <laughs> it's like, Hey, you know, like, like, and I'm serious. You know, I, I, you know, mine sits in my pocket all day and you know why I use it? Sometimes I use it for my GPS and yeah. other times then I use it to get like uh, emails from, from either the studio or whatever, you know, I get them or even from my home or something that will email me, but I will not look at it. Right. I mean, maybe, maybe I'll be somewhere and I'll look at the thing and go, oh, I got one there. Okay, goodbye. Back in the pocket. Right. Use it as a phone. That's what yep. I use it as a phone. Communication. If I got to get in touch with somebody, I'm going to call you wherever I am. Bam. There it is. But these kids, man, they're walking around looking and looking and looking and looking. They're going to be in the chiropractor. Yeah. It's, it's your walking laptop. Yeah. 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 And, you know, that kind of drives me crazy. But as far as dating is concerned, what's more important, your cell phone or your girl? Well, because, uh. you know, on some of the dating sites, they have this question about how quickly do you reply to text messages? And then there are some guys who like know that that really irks a girl, you know, like, you know, you don't reply to me right away. Like, you know, you'll know that I like you and I, re hit you, I re reply instantly, stuff like that. It's, it's really well, girls, interesting. Girls would, girls would, I'd have to commit suicide because some girl that would come up with a baseball bat and whack me on the head and say, yo, well, you didn't give me anything back, you know? Right. I mean, it'd be in my pocket. That's the way it would be. Well, so but, tell me this. How likely do you think um, a sex ban would be here in America? A sex what? Ban. Oh, ban. Oh, to yes. ban sex. Yes. Wouldn't and basically, they're chance. banning sex between unmarried people who don't live together. Wouldn't stand a chance. I mean, it would be broken like crazy. It'd be hard to enforce it. But what if the That's fine true. was $500? The fine was five hundred dollars, and um, um, you know, could that happen here? It's happening right now in this very moment. People are are going through this, not in America, but a neighboring very country, very much like ours. Like I speak. don't know, you know, I you, what what you're talking about. You're talking to the Big Brother uh, theory here, where Big Brother is looking over your shoulder all the time, no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, no matter what your personal uh, what your family does, anything about you, and that is someone else's. It's not yours anymore. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm serious. There, there is going to be a time, I believe, that people are going to rebel mm -hmm. somewhere, somehow. There were several wars over really, really stupid things and really, really smart things. So, mm -hmm. I mean, if these things can happen, right. why can't something happen right now with what's going on? I see people. In the area where where, well, where the studio is, mm -hmm. if I look around, you know, around the outside of this thing, there's four senior hospice and, and homes, you know, where, where seniors live and that after, you know, they, they've lost their own dimension or whatever. Mm -hmm. They're in these things. They're 
their families cannot see them. They're not allowed to see them. Now, I've been to one of them, whereas I had to be examined from the top of my head to the bottom of my toes before I got in the thing with my little sheet that I had. I took the test. I'm negative. You know, one of those kind of things just to get in the front door. Yeah. Of these places. Now, you're talking about not contacting with people. There's two ways of doing that. The dating part, which is extremely important, and just the, uh, the chemicals that are produced in our body that keep us what we are, mm-hmm. and that, that's necessary, so it should be going on. And then you take the senior people, the ones who their, their chemicals and the things that make them going, it starts at the heart. Mm-hmm. And it's what they need, what they want, the love they need from the people that are around them, that they right. love so much and they can't touch them. So the touch, as you said, is the most important thing going on right now, but mm-hmm. it's not happening. In fact, people are actually pulling back from it, which even <laughs> scares me. I mean, how many people did you see lately that wouldn't, they won't touch you? Oh, they might, they might touch your elbow, you know, you like the elbow, you know. Yeah, no, I'm not having that problem. Oh, well, I'm seeing it down here all over the place. You know what I mean? Well, I understand so, what but, you're saying, but I'm conversing with people before. You're talking about dating, right? No, I mean, I'm, through... talking about da- I'm talking about even even just to meet someone. Okay, yeah, well, that's different. And you I, before you date, date. Yeah, I'm not. So just meeting someone, I'm not dating. I'm not touching them either. No, I'm not. I don't touch my roommate. My roommate and I stay away from each other, which is kind of weird to me. I'm like, we share a house, but my previous roommate was different on that. We hugged all the time. This one is different. So, you know, I, I, he sees me coming, he moves, I, you know, we like to s- stay away from each other. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's really weird. I don't know. I think it's weird, but that's him. But, you know, a lot of things, a lot of things that, that were on your website, as a matter of fact, and about dating and things and the things that we should do. Yeah. It was, I mean, there is a mountainous amount of information there for people to read and understand. On my website? uh On my website? Yes. Okay. Because the things that you're talking about are things that people need to know. Yeah. And and it's Twitter and try to put that on Twitter. (laughs) Oh my God. Right. Exactly. That's why I did. I made a whole page for it. And the thing is it's designed not like, you know, this is the rule. This is what this lady says. We got to do it like this. No, look at it, read it, see what you feel about it. The, um, the, um, coupling agreement is something you click the button and download it, download it. So you can have it recreate it. You don't like that one sentence, fix it. You know, make it the way you like it. But the whole idea is to let's, let's start talking about this. Let's talk about it and find a workable way to get around it. So um, um, I'm a born again virgin, <laughs> but not for long. And I'm really happy to say that, you know, I have candidates who like are taking their testing and stuff. I feel like it's back in the old days where I'm really, I get to like actually size up my suitors and decide, you know, which one. And that's kind of cool actually, when you think about it, but, Mm -hmm. and it's so easy to get tested now. I mean, there is that thing about, well, first let me just say this part, super easy to get tested LA County anyway, California. So I look at the thingy, I figure out which day uh, looks like it has least people. I do the kind where you drive in, drive in, it takes me like five minutes. It's a mouth swab. They're not going up my nostrils. I don't want it up my nostrils. Um, so do that. I'm out of there in like five, 10 minutes. And then in a day and a half on my phone, because they've emailed me, I have my results so I can show someone. So I've been negative, but I always, always drive in there too when I feel fine. I don't go in there when I have symptoms or something. Um, I was actually supposed to go last week, but you know, I had a day of, you know, I'm TMI. I don't know, I ate something weird. So my stomach was bothering me. I'll just put it like that. And, um, and I'm like, oh God, what if that's the thing? It probably was just the thing that I ate, but what if, you know? Mm-hmm. So yep, I yep. decided, no, I'm not going right now. And I had sniffles the next day. I'm like, no, I'm not going right now. So I'm now, I'm fine. So I'll probably make an appointment and go tomorrow. But so um, that's done. Okay. So what did I, uh, you said something and I was going to, what did you say? And I said, wait, let me do this first. Uh, no, I was talking about the, the difference in, in the dating of the older people and the younger people and how frivolous the, the younger people were and the seniors or the, the, the older people. Let's put it that I'm going to, I'm going to say over 50. <laughs> on one, I'm, yeah, that's what I'm going to say, because I mean, let's face it, they're years behind me. 
but the idea of like you're like 50 years old now yeah. i mean when you're 50 and you do something like that you're you're actually starting your life over does anybody ever realize that i Wait, mean you, when you're be, 50, you do something like what like like you want to date again or you want to you know have a new life with someone you mean again. because you haven't been doing that for a while anything okay anything for that matter i mean i i mean i forget i mean i'm not going to get too personal but hey listen it's been a while yeah but you know it's one of these kind of things that we're like uh if you're single you're single if you like it you like it if you like don't like it you don't like it and 99 and 44th 100 of us don't like it they don't like to be single oh right right you know? okay, and, so, and the thing that you're talking about is the thing that's scaring the hell out of them because i mean it's like uh, do you touch this person and you're gonna be in the hospital next week or so you just well, you got to get logical about it. So as part of, um, you know, when you're dating people, um, you want to ask them the questions. If they seem like they're freaking out, they're wearing gloves when they go to the grocery store, their their masks are you're all washed and lined up on the, you know, the, uh, washed and, and hanging to dry, you know, <laughs> like they've got enough masks to compare with their socks and underwear. That's me. You know, I've got a mask for each outfit and whatnot. Um, but so yeah, if they're like that. By the way, yeah. just to interject in what you're saying, that uh, tell them about your your website for the that has the masks on it. Okay, so here's the dealio, and I did just pull out. I pulled this out. Uh, these are intention beads, and so as part of being an intention coach, remember it's stones, crystals, aroma, colors, um, strategic thought, which mm -hmm. then leads to authentic emotion which then leads to the um, the vibration that, you know, is helping you to actually literally manifest what it is you want. So this particular um, set of intention beads is made specifically for calling in the one romantically. And, um, and this is what I would use or, or, or rose quartz and selenite um, to help someone with that. But I said to myself, self, how can we incorporate this Blanche in here? Here's Blanche. This is Blanche. Uh, so <laughs> she's ready to go out too. Anyway, that's so cool. Let's a dress up, dress up mask. We can bling out any mask. And so this one though is a sequined mask. And I did this on purpose because I said, you know, all right, so it's a sequined mask. You think there's nothing else you can do to it, but what if you need more? And so in this case, I used um, crystals. There's some Swarovski crystals as well as um, um, crystal chips made from clear quartz crystal. And then there's um, uh, more Swarovski, but the round balls here are howlite. And howlite is a stone that actually is a calming um, stone. So it quiets your mind chatter, influence you in, in that way to influence you to uh, quiet your mind chatter. And that way you can get to the soul and the, the heart of your issues, be able to hear your, your spirit guides and, and that get to that inner wisdom and everything. So that that's what's going on here. And she's got it on her party mask. She's ready to go. So yes, themaskdiva.com. Um, I have those things, and then I also have the intention beads that go with them. So, like for that, there would be intention beads that go with them, and you can buy them separately or as a set. And so, we're doing cool holiday prizes and stuff right now. So, mm -hmm. the people, um, you know, um, just in terms of needing tools, um, I was just talking to someone last night about these two sets. The one that I just held up, which would be to actually assist in bringing that person in, you know, you're working the uh, uh, dating websites and stuff. But then once you're in that relationship, then this is awesome. It's got um, rhodonite, moonstone, lapidolite. And those three things are all great for assisting while you're in it with the difficult things that you go through in the relationship. So stones and crystals, the earth's alive and so is everything that comes out of it. It's got energy benefits to help us. So you got everything to have you prepare for, yeah. that, for that date. Well, yeah, at least in terms of energy coming from without, but you can also, there are things that need to be done within. So my whole thing with creating anything is to hit it from every possible angle, every angle, from your emotional part, the psycho psychological part, physical part around you, environmental, everything. So that way, nothing is counteracting what you're working on. You know, how many people do you know that run around, um, I'm a millionaire, I'm a millionaire. Okay, maybe you don't know anybody who's doing that particular affirmation, I'm a millionaire. But there have been people doing affirmations large like that. And then many months and years later, they're like, this doesn't work because I'm not a millionaire. In fact, I'm being evicted. So, you 
So, but if there's a piece of you that doesn't believe it, you need to at least, you know, 51% believe it and then attack from all angles so that every part of you is in alignment with what it is you are creating. Yeah, it was funny, funny that you should say that though, because uh, about people believing people. Mm -hmm. I heard someone, uh, let me see, I think it was the end of last week because I knew you were coming then and then I was talking about you. And someone turned around and they said, well, I said, yeah, you know, when you go to date somebody or something like that, you need a COVID, you know, test or something like right. that. And I said, yeah. So she says, that's not what I used to ask for. I said, what are you talking about? She goes, she wanted their financial statement. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. I can't believe it. She was so cool. I mean, this, this girl, this girl is unbelievable. And so, she goes, I, wanted to, I wanted to know what he makes a week. Oh no! Oh yeah! I oh mean, my gosh! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's like you have seven steps. Well, she has yeah. twelve. Right, I guess so. She said, "Wow, that's good for her." I hope that worked out for her, though. Well, yeah, yeah but it's not working out anymore because now you got to ask for the, the test. Yeah, I mean, you know, you want to know that you're going to survive it. One kiss can yeah. kill you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So she ain't going nowhere. So you're going to stay away from me until I know for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's the story on now, that. Here's here's something. Uh, here's a, a question. It's on your on your list. How to create a quarantine crew? Oh my gosh! Now, yeah, we've got so many things coming up in our lives mm -hmm. that is built around one word, and I say it on every show. Love. love. Yes. Love. See, I got right into your head that time. Yeah. But the the thing is, the thing is, number one. Love is a, is a funny word. Only has four letters. You know, there's so many words out there with four letters. <laughs> they can pull us up or pull us down. <laughs> Love, on the other hand, you could say it's standing on your head. Yeah. It means so much. Yeah. It makes you so much. Yeah. And to love yourself, you will automatically love everyone around you. Yeah. If you love yourself. Now, with the holidays coming up, what do you see more of at a holiday than anything else? You see presents, you see all kinds of things, you see dinner, you see food, you see you're going to stuff yourself in that with whatever's on the table kind of times, but love, it's there. Yeah. It's part of what you just started the show with, the dating, the touching, the being together. Yeah. Well, uh, what I have learned too in this research to bring all this to the world um, is that, you know, it's more than just romantic touch, like just non, like platonic touch is important. Just non-romantic touch, man to man, non-romantic touch, non, you know, urgent to our healthy well-being. Um, so, you know, if it's about love, we can express that and we have to express our sadness that we can't all be together, but these great big family gatherings, I'm sorry, I don't think that's wise. And uh, then they get together and go maskless, close together, and then numbers peak. That's what's going to happen. Hmm. See, I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of the, other, the other love. Oh, the one, well, no, see, it's the same love. It's just the way you use it. Like, I love my dog, you know? Um, if I met someone, I love the way she smiles. Yes. If I were to be with a bunch of people. You know, yes. I love being with these people. They all, you know, the energy that I'm feeling from these people are emitting love. So you can only have three of them maximum. In your um, in your quarantine crew, I'm and, a dead man. <laughs> huh? I'm a dead man. That, I yeah. mean, I'm serious. I mean, I'm, I'm, I like like twenty people in mine. I understand, so. but the more you multiply the numbers, the more you're taking in the chances of one of those people touching the cootie somewhere, touching their face, getting it, not knowing they have it, being asymptomatic, giving it to you, you giving it to the next person because you think they're in your quarantine crew, and so everything is cool, but it's not cool because of that error. So the less people that you have, the safer you are. In England, I think it's interesting, they have this thing called the, uh, it's like a distance bubble or something, but the word bubble is in it. So it's where two households are allowed to commingle, um, but this, one of those households 
has only one person living in it. So the reason I thought that was interesting is because here in America, one of the things, I, I was single and I had no roommate when this COVID thing happened. I mean, mm -hmm. I knew I was gonna get one because I have an event company and, and I knew that events were gonna suffer greatly. So I said, okay, income. But um, I was like, oh my God, I don't even have a dog. I don't have a goldfish, nothing. I can't like be um, sequestered to my house and not be able to speak to anyone. That, you know, be awful. So this kind of takes that into account. There are a lot of houses with, um, you know, single people in them, apartments and whatnot. No one to hug, talk to, see, you know, without a mask on, on a regular basis. Really? So I thought that was cool. Yeah. I think that part's cool. And that lines of a quarantine crew because they're talking about um, that bubble being people that you can just hang out with. It's not about romance and, you know, boinking each other. <clears throat> that would be, that would be, oh my goodness. I, I don't know. You know, they're English. <laughs> I, <let it> <laughs> I mean, I there's people over there that, that are good friends of ours, and uh, it's it's kind of kind of funny because if you hear what's going on over there and what's going on over here, America would never ever go for what goes on in England. Well, you know, I don't know. Desperate times, desperate measures. Mm. It, their numbers got so scary. That's how that's happened. So, how scary do the numbers need to get here for people to go? Oh, okay, wait a minute. Maybe we need to do something. And I'm just saying, like, can't we take some measures to control this a little better before it gets like that? You know? Yeah, yeah. I've got a million answers for that one, but none of them I would use on this show. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's, there are, there are a couple of things that you can do for a disease like yeah. that. One of them is what you're talking about. You know, stay away from another person that make sure they're tested, make yeah. sure everything is going right for that person. Like they're not sick. They're not, there's not an underlying uh, problem. Right. With that person. They have to keep that person nice and alive and smiling. The other way of doing something like this is to, and it's the last thing I hope that the world ever uses, is to shut down the world. To stop everything. This way you find out exactly who has it. You let it run through that person, not touching another person. And then when it's all the way through that person, that person doesn't have it anymore. So then it gets less and less and less and less and less. That's what we were originally but, trying to do. I know. But you see what, what they did was by shutting down all these things, they also shut down the economy. Yeah. All right. Now, you can't get anywhere without money. Right. Need money. You need income. Right. right, right. now, almost a million or 10 million people that will be evicted. Evicted. Right. 10 million people. Just boop, out the door. Right. Now you take that. All right. People don't, don't understand that people also lose vehicles. Right. Repoed. Right. Oh, oh, somebody turned around and said, they didn't say that on the news. I said, well, right. of course they're not going to say it on the news, you fool. If you can't pay for the car, what happens? Yes. So I said, there's that one. Then you got mortgages. Mm -hmm. Banks don't hear a thing. Right. As a matter of fact, they got the money that they could give you the grants for whatever you need. But they have, or the bank, not the, not the federal government, the bank has its own criteria of who gets it. And who don't get it? Mm -hmm. Those banks have money in their accounts that gain interest every day. And they probably have more than they have from the federal government in interest by the time they finally decide who gets the money and who don't get the money. So all these things are up in the air right now. And we're talking about, or they're talking about, shutting down. You can't do that. Well, so to me then, the answer is, I mean, leave everything open. Wear your masks, wash your hands, give a hoot about that part. Bam. Like lots of businesses, well, yeah, but there are a lot of people who are who are sabotaging that, and that's why we're ending, you know, heading back up the thing again, because right. the businesses are open and people are doing what they're not supposed to be doing, just spewing at each other, and so everybody's catching stuff. 
So that's the problem. So, um, and, and it's unfortunate that it's become, you know, a political thing, you know, I hate that. It's like, come on, let's just do science. You right. know, and the masks are not all N95s, but basic math, if some of the fibers are catching, some of the cootie as it's coming to you, then you're going to have a diluted version of that illness. Why get the whole thing if it's supposedly so bad? And, and that could be another reason why so many people are not getting so sick right now because they are wearing masks. So when that you know wad of cooties that they walk through, you know that's still lingering in the air like it can now, um, touched them, a bunch of it ended up on their mask, not in their body. It ended up being just the sniffles a little diarrhea, and they're good in two days. Uh, so awesome. But that's no reason to say this isn't that serious, I think. It's not that serious because we're following um, rules that we've been forced into by law. All right. Now, I want everybody to get on that website. On that website. And that's the... Jillian Harris Worldwide. So uh, Jillian with a G. Uh-huh. Worldwide. Dot com Jillian Harris worldwide dot com and um, yeah that's where you'll find everything <laughs> you can't you can't miss this thing it says take the COVID nineteen error sexual behavior survey click yeah. here <laughs> now, yeah well how can you miss that I mean come on it's a dead yeah. center middle of the page yeah but you have other things too and it grow your business increase your wealth improve your health hey there's one right there bam yeah. uh, romance and live your dreams. This is what you do. Yes. On a regular day to day basis. It's awesome. You, uh, you know what? I'll tell you something. Let's, uh, and I think I talked to you at the beginning. Let's give them a little, little taste. It's only a minute long. Okay. All right. So everybody just hang in there and listen very carefully. Well, there you go. That was awesome. <laughs> Terrific. What you do, and it's on the website, and I want everybody to go to that website and read all about it. This girl can help you. I would love to. My pleasure to help anyone who needs my assistance. And we talk about manifesting. Mm -hmm. okay? I just hope that everybody knows that everyone can manifest uh, good health. Yeah. The boyfriend or girlfriend they never had. Yeah. The money they need. Yeah. Today. Literally. Yes. One thing that I always have to tell everybody in that, because, I mean, I do a lot of this, these things, that, and energy and everything else, and that when you're finished asking, don't ask, don't say please, don't say anything else, just ask, flat out. When you talk to a spirit, spirit, or the spirit realm, what you must do is you must tell them the reason you need something. I need this because. Could you help me, please? Then think like you already have it and say thank you. Yeah, because uh, I actually don't ask. I just get into gratitude for the thing. Acknowledge what it is that you think it is that you need and then realize jump immediately into realization that you already have it. You might as well jump into gratitude. And now when you talk to spirit and the universe, you're saying, thank you. And the spirit saying, you're welcome. Boom. Here it is for this thing that you have, because if you're asking for it. Then you keep it in, in future. I need, I need, I need. Okay. You need, 
there you go. You're still in need. But I have. Thank you. I have this. Okay, boom. You have it. See what I mean? Isn't that crazy? There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. I mean, you know, like, you know, like everybody, everybody wants a, a Cadillac and a, and a, and a uh, you know, a big house mm-hmm. and uh, no bills. Mm-hmm. Nice, wouldn't it be nice? Yeah. I, you know, you need all these things, but remember, spirits are also frugal. <laughs> they're not going to give you that mansion. They may give you a house, but they're not going to give. They won't give you the mansion. Unless you want to live in it, so then you have to go and you get a COVID test and go to with the guy that has the house or the girl that has the house, and then you can, <laughs> see. Now you're going all the way back to the beginning, and we're going to date with with some some brains here. You know what I'm talking? But when you see me, I promise we will simplify this. <laughs> I'm serious. I mean, this is this is so good. I mean, we we have to. You've got to come back on the show again because I have I have someone that uh, you know I'd really like to pair you up with net in fact his show is tomorrow night ah. and uh it, it, he's got someone on it now for tomorrow night but we're gonna have to plan net for the for the beginning i love this it guy let me let me tell you about manifesting things and how you know, i mean when you when you listen to the guy and you see the guy you'll know why he's uh he was a dentist a very successful dentist in washington state maybe it was california maybe it was in la but, uh anyway he had all these clinics and everything else that all over the place. Okay. So a tree falls on his car. That pieces of wood go into his head. Oh. So he loses an eye. Oh. So he's got one left. Right. Then he goes over a person's house next door neighbor to his house. Now we're talking nice house now. The doctor's got some bucks. <clears throat> you, you go next door and the other guy's having a fight with his wife. Shoots her then him, then commit, then commit suicide, shoots the doctor point blank. Now, anybody like, lost his light, his eye, and everything else, so now he's totally blind. But with these accounts, you would say to yourself, geez, a guy like that? That's not in the guy. other eye? Yeah, gone. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. So, so now this brilliant man right. can't see. Right. Obviously, so you'd think, you know, most of the people that you would think about would would like, okay, I'm just going to cobble around for the rest of my life and be a bland guy. Okay, not this guy. Got this it. guy goes and does almost what you do. He goes out to talk to people to 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 make people feel better, to make people say and and do things they would not think they could, mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. they can, and he right. teaches them that, and that's why he's a host on on my show. Wow. And, you know, the, the funniest thing is you do basically the exact same thing. And you talk about the same thing that, that Pyramid One talks about all the time. And that's love. Yeah. There's not enough of it in this world. And <sighs> somebody says, well, you know, what if there was too much? There's never too much. No. Never, ever. And, and every time you give it, it multiplies within you. So there's even more to give out after that. You know, I'll tell you right now, now when people say, you know... You can see somebody, like I see you, okay? I love you. I love you too. Who you are. Yeah. Okay? I don't have to love you in a, in a sexual sense. Right. Not that it wouldn't be great, but hey. Did you see the video of my let me love you, six minutes and 34 seconds of love? I don't think I saw that one yet. Because um, it's on YouTube. All you got to do is look for um, come get loved by a stranger. <laughs> yeah. And, Okay, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I fully love you, met, you for, for six minutes and 34 seconds. Is it's like, it? Have it's we met? so wonderful. Do it every day. Uh, Maybe I missed that one. Yeah, I don't know that it's on my website. That just makes it's me want to. It's not on the main because I don't see it on the on the thing. Right. If there was something to click on, I would have clicked on it's it already. It's on YouTube, and I have a YouTube channel called Jillian Harris Worldwide. It is there. Oh. Uh, yeah. You know what? We're on overtime, but heck with it. It's on <laughs> YouTube, you said? Huh? It's on YouTube? Yeah, YouTube. Jillian uh, Harris YouTube. Worldwide. Let me go here. Here on YouTube. Do, 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 do. And it says 
uh, come get loved by a stranger. So um, it's one of my videos. It's probably been Gilly, like, says Jillian. Yeah, with a G, G Jill, Gillian, <laughs> Jillian, Gillian. Yeah, I did it again. Harris. Yeah, worldwide. And then what? And then when, you, yeah, when you get there, click on videos. Do, 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 do. I'm on it, but it says, let me see, forgive uh, 45 supporters. Yes. Yeah, so it's going to be a previous, like, those are recents that you're looking at. So you want to go to, uh, if there's a way for it to slide over and show you more videos that are there. Or it's usually at the button at the top that'll say videos. If you click on it, it'll show you um, a whole like waffle spread. I got it. Yeah. Everybody, close your ears for a sec. Okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Well, there you go. It is there. And everybody, listen, uh, you got to go in there. and It's like six minutes and 30 some odd 30, seconds. Yeah, six minutes, 34 seconds of pure, unadulterated love. You almost gave me goosebumps. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> I'm serious. I mean, that is, that is good. Annette. Thank so, you. <laughs> I'm serious. That, that's what that's what I got to do, Annette. I don't know. You Get in touch with me. Uh, send me an email and that over to uh, and anybody, by the way, out there and that has a question. About this show, anyway, anyhow, put it in the comments below it on YouTube or write me, Bob Charles Show at live.com. That's all you do. Send me an email. I'm up at 3 a.m. <laughs> I have nothing better to do but go through all my emails and everything else. Net. And by the way, if you can't speak English and you come from the Philippines, please speak English. Because I got to keep putting it through Google Translator and have to find out that the sentence are backwards. So who knows? <laughs> but love is the same anywhere around the world. So who cares? The thing is that you were you're beautiful. You had a good. I mean, the show and that is awesome. I can't wait for to put it on. Uh, have it on um, YouTube, and uh, we got to touch base. Yeah. Or let's let's separate that cut that uh, thing. Touch. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> totally. it's, it's right there, right there in that, right there in that, uh, in that part. Yeah. Of so yeah. anything else you'd want to tell the people? Well, um, um, I hope that we get to talk again because I can't wait to talk about how this book here, am I showing the whole thing? There we go. Oh yeah. Yeah. Have we met how to, um, identify your reincarnated loved ones, which is based on a true story. And I'd love to share that true freaking story with you um, and why that's so important because, you know, it's all about the love thing. We're right in there with the love thing. And why is it that um, I'm so bonded with this person? How come I'm so quickly? And even some of our not happy relationships or spirit family, but, you know, just uh, the value of that. It's part of what we're living right now. Well, and you know what? It'll, it'll change. It's going to change. There's nothing. It can't stay the same forever. People during times that many, 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 many years ago, and they said, oh, my goodness, they're going to keep doing this. Are they going to keep doing that? Or this is going to go and blah, blah, blah. Everything evolves. Yeah. One way or another. We're all how ready. It evolve. Yeah, but yeah. How it evolves. All right? Yes. Right here. Yeah, that's what uh, I feel. That is where it comes from. So if then, all people that are in the world yes. can, can get together and, and feel each other, Excuse me. Don't forget, we are a big family. We yeah. all came from the same seed. Amazing, huh? All of us are brothers and sisters. No matter what color, creed, or religion you are, and I don't care which one, every single one of us are related. If you were to look at the DNA, and once I did that with um, Johnson Johnson Research, 
Center. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I looked at DNA from a whole bunch of different things. Do you know that it's, they're all identical? Wow. I mean, the only difference is the personal things, like your hair, your whatever, your bones, your, your build, your whatever. All those things are different. But the, the actual original DNA don't right. change, unless you're an alien like me. <laughs> but, but, but all of those things that are the same. So everybody that's arguing, yelling, screwing, uh, whatever, you know, to each other, forget about it, man. You just messed up with your sister. And right. your sister could be purple, for all you know. Who knows? Yeah. Who cares? You know, love is love. A heart is a heart. Right. And Jillian is Jillian. And Bob is Bob. There you go. <laughs> Listen, thank you very, very much for being on the show. Thank and you. Said, so we, we, got it. we have to do that again. I would love to. We will have a ball. Absolutely. Until then. Until then. You know what? There's not enough love in the world, but there is enough love in the world. We can all use it. It's there. It's like a big, giant can of beans. You know what I mean? Just get in there and get some. Get your piece of love. God bless y'all. Bob Charles. <laughs>